Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you're a viewer of my channel, you might know about the Kepler spacecraft. That is the exoplanet hunter, the most prolific exoplanet hunter that's found hundreds of exoplanets in the last 10 years. Well, unfortunately, its mission is coming to an end because it's running out of reaction control uh, propellant. See, for the last few years, it's been doing something called the K2 mission. Uh, the, the spacecraft launched with four reaction wheels and then a few years in it had lost two of them so it was no longer able to maintain three axis pointing, which is very important for a spacecraft that has to point very accurately. But the mission developers and planners were able to you know, keep this working by using the pressure of the sun's light to stabilize it in the roll axis and then using uh, reaction wheels for the other two axes. So that was great, they were able to get extra life. but. The thing about the reaction wheels on Kepler was they were suspect before they even launched. So uh, the reaction wheels come from a company called Ithaco, which uh, was acquired by Goodrich and now they're something like Universal Technologies or whatever. But the point is their reaction wheels actually ended up on a lot of different spacecraft because they were very cheap. They were great quality, they were better than anything else available in theory and yet they failed quite a bit on some very critical spacecraft. They failed on the Fuse spacecraft, Hayabusa, Dawn, Timed, Kepler. I mean, I, I think there's a whole list out there. So when Kepler was about to launch, it had been obvious that this failure rate of these reaction wheels was anomalously high. So they said, yeah, let's take them off the spacecraft and send them back to the manufacturer for testing. So yeah, they did that and they refurbished them and they made sure they were in tip-top condition and still they failed. But uh, in the last year or so, a new uh, paper has come out suggesting a reason for why all these wheels were failing. Now a reaction wheel fails when the friction on the bearing becomes too high and the, the motor has to work too hard, is unable to spin it and therefore is unable to operate the spacecraft. Uh, and there's many reasons for this to happen, you know, and, you know, bearings are incredibly well studied devices because of course they're core to many, many pieces of engineering. So yeah, there's a lot of work on it, but spacecraft obviously operate in a slightly different environment. And this paper that I've read correlates the failures to energetic solar events. So first of all, they looked at the Far Ultraviolet Survey Explorer. This was a spacecraft launched around 1999 and uh, yeah, it had, it had many of its wheels fail and basically was used only for a couple of years. But they looked at the time of anomalous friction increases. So you could have a case where the wheel got a little sticky, but then continued and was restored to functionality. And they looked at about 12 of the, the strongest events. And four of these events happened at the same time as solar flares, and not just any solar flares, like they took the 20 most intense solar flares since 1994, and four of the 12 events happened during these. And this was pretty long odds for accidental correlation. Similarly, in Kepler, one of its reaction wheel failures happened in July of 2012 during a coronal mass ejection. Now, initially it was thought that this was not connected because the coronal mass ejection was seen on Earth after the reaction wheel failed on the spacecraft. But thanks to all those space telescopes out there that are able to model the solar plasma and everything, it was obvious that the, the cloud of plasma had actually flown out and had hit the spacecraft first. Therefore, the correlation was, it was quite possible that this had caused this. So now the question is, is there an actual physical mechanism? Because of course spacecraft fail regularly when hit by these energetic solar events. You know, electronics are sensitive to plasma and radiation and stuff like that, but this is a mechanical device. How does a bearing fail because the magnetic fields are weird or the radiation is, is high? Well, their theory is to do with electrostatic discharge across the bearings. So the bearings have these little ball bearings in there and there has to be a little gap and of course there's a bit of lubrication. And because the ball bearings typically aren't touching both sides, the, if ele electricity wants to flow it has to jump through the lubricant. So their theory is that under the right circumstances if there's a high enough voltage, and they measured and it was about 6 volts, 
An electric spark can jump across the ball bearing to the other side and create a little crater, a little imperfection, which will, of course, damage it. And uh, if this happens continuously, then your thing can eventually break down. When it's spinning, it's also possible that the spark will then create like a small blob of, you know, basically liquid, which will stick to the ball bearings and damage those as well. So that's one possible mechanism. Of course, it's not proven and nobody can go out and examine these spacecraft. These are all in deep space, they're lost for now. So no one's gonna know for sure whether that was a mechanism. Uh, also related that the two, two of the interplanetary spacecraft that were affected by this, Hayabusa and Dawn, they both used ion thrusters, which as you know, generate high voltages and uh, you know ion flows and stuff like that. So another possible correlation there. But on the other hand, you know, engineers, they look at these things and they say, well, it's not 100% sure that, that this works. After all, these reaction wheels are kind of self-contained assemblies. The casing should act as a Faraday cage, so it's by no means guaranteed that this is the effect. On the other hand, it may not need to be uh, something to be concerned about because, you know, since about 10 years ago, Ithaco have been sending, or Ithaco reaction wheels have been using ceramic bearings, which means that the mechanism involving a, an electrical short across a bearing uh, won't matter anymore. And so far, none of those have suffered any failures. So it's possible that this thing has in fact solved itself. And it does answer the question of why so many spacecraft running these reaction wheels have failed. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.